Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse has appeared on a program called Axios, which is on HBO. Now, um, I actually happen to subscribe to HBO Max, so I have access to this program, but until today, frankly, I had never heard of it before. Uh, but I went ahead and checked, and sure enough, uh, there's a number of programs from this uh, HBO Axios show but this particular episode, at least at the time I'm recording this, is not available. There was a clip that was put out, though, so it looks like they were just uh, putting that out as a little teaser first, so far as I can tell anyway. But it shows Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse interacting with the host. And although this clip was only a minute and 44 seconds, that's on your screen here now, and for this is the official HBO account, 2.28 million subscribers. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, they actually covered, in this very short clip, a few like actually key points here, including the idea like what happens to XRP if Ripple goes away. Brad Garlinghouse addresses it right there because he's he's asked effectively. Uh, you know, well, XRP. I mean, is it is the idea of it? Uh, is your idea your your defense effectively that XRP is not a security purely because it's been traded for you know the better part of a decade? And I'm paraphrasing here, but that that's essentially the question. To which Brad Garlinghouse responded, no, no, that's not, that's a, a, technically it's a piece of it, but he just responded, no, that's, that's not our argument. And he said, look, here's the thing. If Ripple, the company goes away, XRP will continue to be traded. And that's actually, absolutely functionally true. And that's why I think that people need to uh, differentiate between the idea of whether or not XRP is a security now versus whether or not Ripple sold XRP as though it were a security. And that's actually a, I've learned, because I don't have a legal background, mind you, I've learned that that's an, actually an important legal distinction. You could sell just about anything as though it were an investment contract. It could, it could pick a fruit, it doesn't matter, an apple, packets of bologna, it doesn't matter. If you're promising to increase the price of an asset, uh, you know, th something can, even if it's not in and of itself, just by nature, a security, it can be sold as though it's an investment contract, meaning sold as though it's, it's a security. So, um, you know, but that's why I really think that, you know, we need to have that understanding for, so we can have, you know, coherent conversations here in the XRP community on this topic. But um, also, I just, I feel like this needs to be broken down from a legal perspective as, as such. It needs, because look, even if Ripple did something wrong, and I'm not saying they did in the way that they sold XRP, even if they did, there's no way in hell that XRP to, today is a, uh, is a security. Um, and also, by the way, so again, not only do I not have any sort of legal background and I'm not offering legal advice, I also don't have a financial background. I'm not offering financial advice. And so you should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast in this space who likes to talk about Ripple and XRP and crypto related topics. I make YouTube videos purely as a hobby, but there is nothing special about me. So uh, here's the headline from Crypto Media Outlet U today. If Ripple goes away, XRP will keep trading, says CEO Brad Garlinghouse. In the latest episode of documentary news program Axios on HBO, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse said that XRP would continue trading even if Ripple went away to make a case against classifying the token as a security. And here's a quote. If you own a security, it gives you ownership of a company, right? If Ripple goes away, XRP is going to keep trading. Exactly. So it's functionally different than what has historically been described as a security from a legal perspective. That's why I keep saying, you know, try keep putting that, uh, you know, uh, square peg in the round hole or whatever, some some such jazz doesn't really work. Shoehorning this, you know, shoehorning this new asset uh, into the existing legal framework doesn't really work so well. It functionally doesn't work, which is why we're seeing such a train wreck in the legal system here. Now, um, and it's, I'll tell you what, it's going to be interesting once this episode actually does air, because uh, in looking on my HBO Max app on my smart television, uh, I saw that uh, the typical episode is about 30 minutes. So if they got into these types of questions, I know they probably make some of the juiciest stuff uh, available in the, the teaser clip fine, but if they got into that much, uh, it looks like there was like, like no, you know, they weren't holding back in terms of what questions could be thrown at Garlinghouse. Uh, it's going to be interesting. If there's 30 minutes of this, I uh, there's going to be a lot to talk about here. And it's also fascinating to see that Brad Garlinghouse is not shying away from this, The fact, d despite the fact that he's personally being sued by the SEC, uh, along with Chris Larson and Ripple, the company. Uh, he's, just, he's just out there and making his case. But anyway, the piece continues. Garlinghouse adds that the U.S. is the only country in the world that has alleged that the token could be a security. 
Ripple was slapped with a lawsuit by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission back in December, which accuses it of offering XRP as an unregistered security. However, as the recent Tetragon ruling shows, the court will have the final say in determining the token's regulatory status. And what they're citing right there is there was a company that did a Ripple Series C funding around December of 2019. They had a clause in their actual contract stating that if XRP is deemed to actually functionally be a security, then uh, they, they, they can get out. They can monetarily get back in what, uh, back what they've invested, and they can just, you know, wash their hands of it and be done. So what happened here, and I, I made a video about this very recently, happened just the other day, a uh, judge slapped this down and said, no, this is a claim by the SEC that XRP is a security. Then making the claim doesn't make it a security. This has to be fully adjudicated, which it has not yet been to this point. And so Tetragon, it was, it was seriously, it was a, a very sweet bitch slap. It felt really, really good as an XRP holder because it did seem to me that they were jumping the gun here. Uh, now, um, excuse me, the Ripple executive, who was also named as a defendant in the lawsuit, along with ex-CEO Chris Larson says that the SEC's enforcement action will negatively affect the whole industry. And here's another quote from Brad Garlinghouse. This isn't just bad for Ripple. It's bad for crypto broadly in the United States, and it's driving that activity. It's driving that entrepreneurial activity outside of the United States. I think that definitely bodes poorly for the crypto industry at large. And indeed, sure enough, uh, the, the United States is the only country on the planet that is uh, stating today that XRP is a security. And it, and, and even then, it's not like the whole federal government agrees. Uh, you know, the SEC says it, it's, a, it's a security, but there's all sorts of different parts of the federal government that all think it's different things, and it can't necessarily be every single one of those things that various departments say that it is. So again, it's a complete train wreck. Nobody knows what the hell's going on with this nonsense. And by the way, check this out too. I'm not gonna play this clip, but I watched this a couple times actually. It was put out by somebody named Go Crypto. And this must have been a 2015 area video. I'm sure it's Vitalik Buterin, creator of Ethereum. And in this short clip, he talked about what they were doing uh, to, to fund the Ethereum Foundation. And it was so fascinating because he, he, made, he, like, he made no bones about it. Give us your money. We will give you. Uh, we will give you Ethereum, and we will grow our company. We will grow our foundation. And and it was so interesting to see back then, because mind you, obviously Ethereum's worth effectively nothing on the day that it launches, which I believe was July of it launched July of 2015, I believe. And so if you jumped in, you could you could purchase uh, 1,000 Ethereum for one Bitcoin. So whatever Bitcoin was worth in 2015, which which wouldn't have been much. I mean, hell, you can think about, I know the price is volatile for Bitcoin, it always has been, but I mean, think about the beginning of 2017, you know, Bitcoin is around $1,000, so I, I can't remember where in the market cycle it was, like summer of 2015, but it couldn't have been that much. So for almost no money, you could have had 1,000 Ethereum, and today, I didn't check the price before recording this, but what's Ethereum today? Like 16, 17, 1800, probably, I didn't, again, I didn't check, but I, I'm sure it's somewhere around there, that many dollars per Ethereum, like, <laughs> It's just crazy to think how this has all evolved. But, but still, I digress a little bit. The, the point being that there's no secret here that they were selling this. This sounds much more like an investment contract. Because, look, Ripple, it was first of all, wasn't selling to uh, the end user ever. They never have. And they certainly weren't promising anything. There was no contract. There, there couldn't have been an investment contract. And uh, But still, even so, Vitalik Buterin, he said that their funding model was a blend of two different, different uh, cryptocurrencies. And uh, he, he said, he was referencing XRP, but he said Ripple. Uh, but, or, or maybe in the clip he could have technically just met what Ripple was doing in terms of utilizing XRP as a funding mechanism. But he cited them in a coin that I wasn't familiar with called MasterCoin. And so it was just kind of interesting to, to see all of this here. But it's, it could not be more crystal clear that if XRP is a security and was sold as a security, then Ethereum, oh, absolutely was. And I'm not making the claim that it was. I'm just saying, if it's true for XRP, you better freaking believe that it's true for Ethereum and what Vitalik Buterin did here. And it's just so funny in this clip, he literally cited that what they're doing, it's like what Ripple did. Uh, I'll tell you what, this all this all this nonsense, it just, it really steams my vegetables, my friends. And that is not a good thing. Ugh. I don't know, you guys tell me what you think, but as soon as this video comes out, there's going to be a lot to talk about, I'm sure, with, uh, you know, this Brad Garling house, and I don't know what the host name was, with this Axios show, but uh, it's going to be fun to watch this, so I'm sure whenever it is made available, I'll be talking about it more in the future, 
Uh, undoubtedly, if it's going to be about a half hour long episode, there's going to be a lot said. And I, I, uh, I don't think that uh, the host was pulling any punches, to be honest. But um, I'll go ahead and wrap up there. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.